Okay, so the first question that had popped up on our meme for questions for our monthly call had to do with creating containment. How do we create containment when we want to do an experiential exercise? So if you're someone who experiences what you might think of as emotional dysregulation, or we might describe that as feelings of overwhelm um, or feeling um, like when you get into an emotional space, it's hard to get out, like it's kind of hard to close that up and get on with your day, then creating containment for how you approach diving into experiential materials or body activation um, in your practice of self-reflection and checking in with yourself um, can be a way to uh, help you navigate that terrain more easily. So today I wanted to offer a few recommendations for creating containment. So if, if you are working with experiential activities and body activation as a way to work through um, whatever content is emerging for you, then that is what this particular segment is about. Welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Brianna McWilliam and I am a licensed and board certified creative arts therapist, author, and educator with more than 15 years in the field, helping adults struggling with insecure attachment go from self-doubting to self-sovereign so they can attract those soul-shaking, passionate partnerships that they want without having to talk in circles around their feelings for hours or even years on end with no tangible result. And I do this using a psycho-spiritual approach to creative arts interventions using the McWilliam Method. The McWilliam Method is informed by evidence-based practices in attachment and trauma research, but is rooted in creative arts interventions as the primary modality. The McWilliam Method is comprised of three principal tools to address mind, body, and spirit, cognitive reframing, body activation, and arts-based experientials. Today, I'm gonna to be sharing a clip of a live stream event that took place inside my private Facebook groups, which people can access once they've purchased one of my online courses. If you're interested in finding out if you might have insecure attachment, check out the link in the caption of this video. You'll be able to take an easy four question quiz and find out your attachment style, plus a detailed explanation. Now, if you like what you see in here and you haven't yet, make sure that you like, subscribe, and ring the bell for notifications. I put up videos once or twice a week, and sometimes I will do occasional live streams through my YouTube channel, and I wouldn't want you to miss out. So the first thing that I would recommend with creating containment around experiential exercises is establishing a sacred space. So oftentimes, you know, if you're going to a counselor or to a therapist, the, the office space it becomes the sacred space, right? It becomes what we call a container or a holding environment. And everything in that environment is kind of a cue to you that it's safe for me to open up here. And also as it becomes, you know, the therapist gives you a heads up, okay, we've got about 10 minutes left, that kind of thing. Those are cues to help you start to, not close down, but to help you start to organize whatever content may have arose in that hour so that you feel comfortable going back out into the world and having to put your socialization persona back on because we all have to do that. We all have to navigate society. So, one of the things I recommend is creating a safe space. I have, and a safe space could be a, a specific room. Um, I live in New York City, so that doesn't happen so often. <laughs> so what I do is I create a, a specific, I have like a tray. I have a tray and on that tray are certain objects that represent different facets of experience for me and or sentimental reasons. Also, I have certain, I'm a crystals person as well. So I like crystals and I like um, smells, incense. I like sage. I like objects from different travels, spiritual practices I've done throughout the years. And they're actually arranged on the tray according to um, a bagua, which is a map for how to organize your energy. This is derived from feng shui in terms of, of how you position things. So I have a tray and that tray I bring into whatever space I'm gonna be using when I decide I'm gonna go in and do a spiritual practice. And then I have, secondly, I you might have a ritual. So a ritual for opening up the space and settling into it. And I recommend that with that ritual, there's a process of opening and a process of closing. So my rituals, for example, I will take my tray into whatever room I'm gonna be inhabiting. I will light incense. 
then I'll walk around my space and I will sort of wave the incense in front of every portal, which is a door or a window, basically. If there's a vent, I might do it in front of the vent. But I will say, and this is influenced by some of the shaman shamanistic trainings I've had, but I will say that I am praying to the spirits of the north, the south, the east, the west, and to my angels and spirit guides that they protect the four corners and pillars of this room, and that any energies that do not serve are alchemized, are released and alchemized um, into the universe so that they may be transformed and returned to the collective for what they were intended. And I cleanse the space in that way. Sometimes it's intense, sometimes it's sage. And then I will typically, I'll take, um, I have a, a large white, or I should say clear crystal, and I have a quartz, a rose quartz, and I will usually put them in the smoke of the incense or the sage to cleanse them, hold them against my heart, set an intention for whatever amount of time I'm gonna be doing this practice, and then I engage with whatever practice I'm gonna do. Sometimes it's the guided meditation, sometimes it's scribble drawings, like the ones that you sometimes I sometimes post in this group um, as a meditation. Sometimes I have a mindset practice around money. So sometimes I have a pre, I will, do focus wheels, like a lot of you have experienced in your courses. I will create new focus wheels every three to six months. And then I'll record myself expressing the affirmative statement. And then I will tap uh, my way through the statement and until the statement is done. So sometimes that takes 10 to 15 minutes. It depends on what I feel like I'm needing in the ebb and flow of my life. So that's the first thing I would say, sacred spaces, repetitive and ritualistic practices to open up the space and close out the space. Also, um, I recommend using scaffolded, scaffolded imagery. So we did this probably most explicitly in the Energy Expansion 101 course where we scaffolded the images we were using, building up and organizing the foundation of the inner space through the framework of the root and the sacral, right? So each time we did that was a five day course. So each day we came back, we revisited the first practice from day one, and then we would add a little bit more to it, like building a scaffolding for a building, right? Um, so I recommend that in your practices that you follow a process of scaffolding, that that you are acknowledging that everything has a developmental trajectory and you can't jump from A to Z and without the journey is is the whole point, right? Um, so in the courses, any of the courses that you've purchased from me, actually, they are all all the meditations I offer or experientials that I offer are intended to be consumed in a scaffolded way. So one thing builds upon the next. So for example, in most of the one on one courses, we start with in each one, they're all a little different, but more or less the same principle. We start with establishing safety. We start with developing a visual language, and then we start to layer in different experiences on top of that, right? So that's scaffolding. And scaffolding is something you always wanna start with home base. And we're gonna talk about more of that in just a minute when we talk about window of tolerance because it, they tie, they're very closely tied. Um, another tip for that is when you're opening up the space, I actually have a specific script that I use with my guided meditations. I switch it up a little bit each time, but for those of you that listen to more than one of my guided meditations, you probably notice I have a certain rhythm. There's a certain script that I use to open up the meditation and to close it down. Um, I've also found that counting backwards when you want to close up the space can be really useful. Also using is, um, images and visualizations that start you in one place, take you somewhere, and bring you back. So for example, I usually recommend that we start in the safest and most neutral place in the body, noticing where that is, giving it, making it into a landscape or an interior space. And other visualizations, I don't think I've done it in this group yet, but I'll use a movie theater. And I'll say, we're gonna go into your third eye and we're gonna imagine that the screen on the back of your eyelids is your own personal movie theater. And you are the one in charge of what comes in and out of this theater. And for now, we're gonna project onto the screen whatever your inquiry might be. And just notice what colors and images and things pop on the screen. And we're gonna breathe some life and some personality, some animation into it, and then just follow wherever it wants to go, float off the screen and follow wherever it wants to go in your body. So then we leave the theater and we follow it 
And then after we gain whatever wisdom comes from that witnessing, we return to the theater and we turn off, we press stop, we turn off the lights, we close up the doors and we count backwards from five to one, right? So there's an opening and there's a closing. Um, and just thinking about images that work for you when it comes to opening and closing. Some people will use containers. Some people will have you, like you can start by cultivating a safe place. I mean, that could take anywhere from one session to six months. It depends on your relationship to safety and how quickly you can move into the body, right? We're all gonna have different levels of sensitivity to that. But you might work on containment for the space of six months. Maybe you create a bowl or you build a little treasure chest. And as you create the, the actual treasure chest in real life, now you've got this real physical object that you can now internalize as an anchoring object. And it's something that you open and close every time you go in, right? So those are examples of creating containment, counting backwards, using actual objects, bringing them in, using them as images for containment. Sound is another thing that is used for containment. So you might have a particular sound that cues you that it's time to start and it's time to stop. If you've ever gone to church or any kind of religious ceremony, they use a lot of sound to cue the beginning and the ends of the ceremony. So singing bowl is something that I like to use to cue the beginning and end. If we're doing a drumming experiential, it's the rhythm. So the rhythm might be steady um, in the beginning, then as we're getting towards the climax, it might speed up. Then as we're starting to slow down, get back to, towards coming out of the meditation or the journey, we slow the, we slow the rhythm. Right, and the slowing of the rhythm lets you know, okay, I'm coming back to myself now. Now that those are those are ways that you can create containment with nonverbal anchors. Then there's also the process, right? Then there's the last piece, which I would say is the processing of the experience. And I would highly recommend that you allow yourself time for the processing, because that's also gonna help you organize the energy before you have to step into the next thing. So if we were in a session together and we were doing an experiential activity, I would probably time it so that we had some time to connect with each other in the beginning, 10 to 15 minutes, what's going on, what's your inquiry. Then we would probably go in and we'd do an experiential, either art making, body activation, movement, sound. We would do that for about um, 35, 40 minutes. And then the last 10 to 15 minutes, you wanna leave for processing. And processing is also, um, an important component to feeling like, okay, I took out all my toys and now I'm putting them back so that I can go on throughout my day. Um, so processing is something that could utilize writing, could be free association writing, could be poetry, could be just literally, you know, jotting down some notes about what you experienced, sketching. That's something that we've done, you know, together here in, in the courses and in the group or drawing, you know, the the practices of dominant and non-dominant handwriting that we've used in the past. It could be any of those, it could be a collage, you know, it could be any of those things, but I recommend it, you offer some kind of reflection or processing on the experience because not only does that give you more insight, but it also allows you to digest some of what you've experienced so you don't feel like, you know, you just ate a big meal and someone just threw you on a Ferris wheel, right? Some kind of amusement park ride, because you'll immediately throw up if you do that, right? So you wanna give yourself time to digest the content and I recommend you do that through processing. So just to go over that one more time, how to create containment around body-based act, body activation or um, experientials. And when I say that, I mean art making, guided visualizations, um, uh, music or movement, the things that we use in, in the courses that you experience um, with me. And I just one more time, I'm gonna go over them. So you wanna create sacred space, okay? You want to develop a repetitive and a ritualistic practice for opening and closing that space. A couple of tips for how to do that is to count backwards, to scaffold your imagery, right, scaffolding your imagery, and or you could use things like sound. And lastly, I would have you make sure that you set aside enough time to process whatever came up in the experience. So that could be free association, like writing, could just be taking notes on strictly what you witnessed or experienced. It could be sketching and drawing, anything like that that allows you to digest what, what you have experienced so that you feel like you are gaining insight and that it is also organized enough for you to close up that experience and continue throughout your day.